So you should always start with your hardest trick or your hardest move or your hardest physical whatever and then proceed from there. But uh, I started with Dragon Flags because it's not really the, the hardest, but it's the hardest to do correctly. And you'll see throughout the clip, I my form slips a lot and sometimes I do like the little this kind of leg and then other times I do like the split leg, other times I, I do different things or whatever because it's just kind of, it's a difficult move to do correctly. If you can't do, if you can't even do it good or can't really do the move at all, try reverses. And if you can't do reverses, I got more stuff, but try reverses from the get-go. So you just kick your feet up and then just as slow as possible, and that's the key point. The main important thing, as slow as possible, let those feet down, but very slowly. Don't do it fast. This is a little preview of what we're gonna be doing for Free Running Friday. There's gonna be a lot of parkour, a lot of free running, uh, so a lot of these tricks are gonna not look like the tricking tricks that I already showed, but, that's okay, just for now. In between your sets of dragon flags, just jump on things, two-legged, and then sometimes one-legged. And uh, whenever you do that, try to extend your jump back as much as you can, and then try to extend your jump as high as you possibly can. And always remember that there's like a bell curve, like an arc, so, you're gonna not jump to the object. You're gonna jump up and land on the object. That's super important for doing a proper precision. For your, I'm gonna teach how to do all of that stuff, but for now, it's literally just jump on your feet and then jump on one of your feet and extend that to only one and two and further back and further forward and further up. That's all it is. So, for now, just do that. The next set I refer to as gravity sit-ups, even though they're not gravity boot sit-ups. You don't need gymnast rings or a TRX band to perform this, although I am using a TRX. I'm also gonna show you how to just hook your feet underneath. Well, I don't really have to show you that. I'm gonna show it for the flip, but just hook your feet underneath. Um, it can be done easier for sure. You don't need the weighted vest. You don't need the backpack. And you don't actually need to stretch all the way back that much. And the way when I come up, most of the time I'm coming up like this. Actually the easiest way is just to throw your arms. The second easiest way is to cross your arms. And then the third easiest is to do like this. Then from there you can take like this and then reach towards the opposite knee. Which is better for your serratus and attacking your abs from a sideways angle or a 45 degree angle. This is where the advantage to learning the macaco or the tornado kick and the butterfly kick, but especially the macaco, really comes into play. So in this particular part, what you're going to do is basically a macaco, but you're not going to do a reverse fault. You're not going to do a macaco. What you're going to do is you're going to lead in with what's called a J-step, which everyone overcomplicates and no one cares about a J-step anyways. Walk along the brick, <clears throat> turn against the brick, and then jump over the brick. <laughs> And then whenever you do that, land on the leg that's kicking. And then you're doing a moon kick. Anyways, the more you go this way, the more of a flash gainer it is. The more you go this way, the more of a stupid fairy kick twisty thing it is. So try to go not this way or this way. You want to go at like a 45 degree angle. The other thing is a Gumby or 
touchdown rays, basically the whole rays chain. <clears throat> so depending on what you're good at, this could be a touchdown rays, it could be a Gumby, it could be a Sailor Moon, it could be a rays. <clears throat> just go with the flow, whatever it is that you're good at, and just keep doing that. If you're better at the tornado kick, all right, we'll make it more tornado kicky. If you're better at the macaco, make it more like a macaco. All right, let's be real, this looks stupid. And especially if there's other people on the swings, this looks stupid. But I never had serratus muscles before, I even knew what they were, except for like from Dragon Ball Z, and they weren't called serratus muscles, and they didn't look exactly the same. I didn't know what they were until I started doing this exercise. <clears throat> turn your feet out, like turn them like completely parallel, uh, perpendicular to what you're trying to do, parallel to each other and then perpendicular to what you're trying to do. And uh, then uh, grab something and then you're not doing like a lumberjack where, you, where you're coming in like this and you're not doing like a, the little ab wheel thing. You're kind of like starting like an ab wheel thing and then also doing the lumberjack thing. So is this part of the superset? You're working on your Pop 360 Crescent or whatever stupid thing you want to call it. <clears throat> Basically you're spinning back to where you were. So jump, spin, land and you're throwing a crescent kick and maybe you don't have the right flexibility maybe you don't have good technique uh throw a low crappy crescent kick you just like bring your leg up and bring it across and it'll get higher if you're doing the mobility and all the other things that i've been showing it's going to get higher and higher but i'm showing it again from a beginner to intermediate stage so it's going to look like crap and maybe the videos when you video yourself are gonna look even worse than the ones that I'm showing, but it will definitely look better than what I'm showing if you do it correctly. So anyways, if you add it to your butterfly kick, go down, go across, come up, this is the part people always mess up, come up and not just up like where you lift and fly this is the part where you go up you just stand up and you're not flying when you stand up then throw your 360 crescent or from that position I'm thinking it would be a 180 crescent either way throw a crescent kick then when you do that it's gonna bring you around it's going to be really ugly and wrong, but it's going to give you a lot of power to get, like, if your butterfly kicks kind of suck, this is a really good move to learn in a line with your other moves, and especially with your butterfly kick, to really launch your butterfly kick, because it's going to give you a lot of power, so do this and then a butterfly kick. It's still not an illusion kick. It's not even close. Uh, the one that I'm going to show, as you can see, my leg is hooked. If I remember right, uh, I'm leaning forward instead of like leaning back and doing like a, this kind of shape. Instead, I'm like leaning into it and hunching over it. It's pretty terrible. It's a pretty terrible illusion kick. The other thing you can do with that crescent spin and crescent technique is you can take that uh, tornado kick that I showed you earlier and you can well first you need to modify it into a 540 kick so instead of just kicking around you need to kick around back so hyper as I alluded to in the last video you need to jump off one leg kick up or chamber, chamber up, kick with that same leg, and then land behind you over there on that same leg. So whatever that, whatever leg that is, you gotta do all of that 
And as if that wasn't hard enough, this is actually where the crescent kick comes in. After you've successfully completed the 540 kick, which is a hyper tornado kick, then the crescent kick comes around. Which luckily you can walk off really easy. Just like chamber it, throw it out there, and step through it. So that's another advantage to using the crescent kick and learning it jumping and spinning. There's a lot of things actually you can use this for. These are just a few examples. But the jackknife is pretty good.